Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The GOAT, where we figure out who and what it takes to be a great athlete or a great, the greatest in your area. And tonight, I'm so excited we got two guests and one special guest who drives the Triumph program, Julie Hall. And we got Mike Kenny and we got Abraham Cisse. And we're going to get in and talk in depth about what they do. But before we go there, I want to talk about last week's show. We had Sam Davis and Maria the Mouth Ortiz. And they talked about the relationship it takes between an athlete and a coach. And how deep they went was so cool. They were friends forever. He started coaching her when he was seven and he's still in her life. And that kind of coach that's pushing people and therefore them on the journey is so valuable. So that was such a good episode. And, and tonight I want to talk a little bit about what our definition of a goat is. And, and our definition of the goat, and it's, it includes grit and it includes being tough and all those kinds of things in the athletic world is the way where we usually portray it. But tonight we're going to do something special and we're going to talk about the goat in a, in a different way and first responders and people that are in the military and people that are struggling with seeing all kinds of, of horrible sights and, and being involved in all kinds of accidents after they happen or shootings or all those kinds of things. And they're protecting us every single day of their life and dealing with these issues to protect us. To me, that's the epitome of a goat. It's what a goat is. And every day they gotta be on their game. They gotta be performing at the top of their game. But one thing I wanna talk about is where do goats go to heal? It's like when you're a professional athlete, when you're a military person, you come back, where do you go to heal? And we're gonna take it from there. Julie, you wanna roll the footage? All right. Give me just one second here. All right. And we'll get it going. I will absolutely say that this program 100% saved my life. And I encourage any first responder or veteran that is struggling in any way to reach out. This is the best five days you will spend. It will absolutely change your life. This program completely changed my life. You know, it's a completely different approach. There's, there's no psychiatrist shoving a bunch of medications down your face. It's all holistic, and it's things that you can actually take back with you. You know, once you leave here, you still have some tools to control it. Mike, just watching that makes me feel so good that I'm a part of that. I, I've been a part of this program for a couple of years with Mike and watching what he has done and all the the way he's put it together and everything has been so amazing. And 
to be a part of that journey has been an honor, Mike. And I got to tell you, I'm so excited to talk to you tonight. Um, I've got this whole list of accomplishments that you have done, and I'm not going to read them all, but West Point grad, all you, there's so many of them that I'm not going to go on. Mike, you are a goat. <laughs> you are a goat of goats. And now you've turned your, your, your goatness in the military and everything that you learned into a program. Why? Tell me about you and why you're doing this. Well, Jeff, thanks for the kind intro, you know, over flattering, but uh, no, it's been great working with you as well. I mean, obviously you were featured prominently in that video, which is what, you know, what I like about it, you know, among many things, yeah. but uh, you know, so it's that, that collaborative effort. It's great. No, yeah. Hey, I spent 22 years in the military, you know, so I retired as a, as a Lieutenant Colonel, you know, out of Fort Leavenworth here and, you know, spent time in the special forces, all that stuff. Right. So upon my 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 departure from the service, my separation, I was approached by my former boss, who was approached by his former boss, who said, "Would you like to take the directorship of a fledgling nonprofit right. that helps veterans and first responders with PTS?" I said, "Sure." You know, at the time, went through the Kaufman Fast Track program. You know, as part of my Soldier for Life transition assistance piece. So I'd always had some entrepreneurial leanings. Right. And I thought, what a great combo. So some entrepreneurship, you know, for all intents and purposes, taking the helm of a nonprofit startup right. with a great mission doesn't really get much better than that. So right. five plus years later, here we are, right. you know, so 44 classes, our 44th class will be this April. Yes. So 44 cohorts, 400 plus individuals served men and women, veterans and first responders. Right. Lives saved, you know, lives impacted. So we're really, really proud of that. So, so Mike, yeah. you say lives impacted and you say those things, but the contribution that you make, the people that you put in place, I've seen what people come in the way they are. And I see them walk out five days later and it couldn't have been pulled off without you and driving that ship to make sure that they're getting the right things. I mean, Mike, you brought in KU, you do research on this. You've got like all these little things in your mind that make things organized and all your operational trainings and all that. This is the neatest flow, the neatest program that I've ever seen. And it's like, and it is so impactful. Why do you think it's so impactful? Because I have never seen a program like this that does anything like this. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I will say, you know, hey, I've got great clinicians and providers. You know, there's you, there's Dr. Bruce Lease, KUKU Med, you know, 37 years of clinical experience in psychology. He's a great man. You know, that's really helped us craft, you know, the framework of what it is that we're doing. Um, geez, we've got. Um, my yoga guy has been with me since the beginning, Kerry right. Stewart, you know, Gulf War vet. So he's you're amazing. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, beyond just the yoga, just that, you know, just the lifestyle. Anna Saviano, you know, who's from, uh, you know, B. Brookside. We've got Amy Schoenhoff from, uh, you know, Mindfulness in the Heartland. Right. So in terms of expertise, you know, I've just tried my best to reach out to people that I thought were like, the best in their craft, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, and there's a, you know, multitude of others, John Sibelius, who does our, uh, artistic expression, you know, veteran art. So he brings, you know, a lot to the table. Exactly. Um, we've got a, an alum that graduated. He's come back and taught, you know, a keto, I'll say the philosophical aspects of a keto. So Bill right. Witzar, you know, so we call him, you know, affectionately Sensei Bill, right? So he's a black belt in right. keto. I wouldn't mess with him. just like when I wouldn't mess with you, you know. Well, <laughs> you teddy bear of a man who, you know, wrap you up in a knot, you know. <laughs> no, but you know, all, all of that aside, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I give credit to you know my my, my top notch providers. To be honest with you, and for my part, um, you know, hey, when I was at Leavenworth as a, you know, I, I got trained in, uh, you know, in Leavenworth fashion at the Command General Staff College for, you know, curriculum development and all that stuff, you know, where they teach right. you, 
terminal and enabling learning objectives and, and you've been through our process, you know, the post-instructional conference. I love it. Men's military studies. So very disciplined, yes. very systematized, all with an eye towards being a learning organization, iterating, getting better, feedback loops. Right. You know, I'm, I'm a systems engineer, you know, not, not saying I'm a good one. <laughs> exactly, though. You are. You that's, are. What I, that's what I bring to the table for my part. For right. What it is. I truly love it. And, and here's what I'm going to throw in, Mike, because you're not going to throw this in. I'm, I'm working on it. But when we do those groups and when we do the ceremony for loss and the leap of faith and those kinds of groups, you are so involved and so engaged with the individuals and you bring such a, a piece to that. But you it's a lot deeper to you than what you let on. <laughs> you love to see the change. You give everything you got to that program, dude. I have to say again, 43 going on 44 iterations. And you said it, you know, very aptly. The the metamorphosis. And again, I don't want to oversell them. I'm not a marketer. You know, right. I'm not I'm not a BSer, you know, if I can say that. Yeah. Um, you know, so I try to tell it like it is, but yeah, you know, you see people very reluctant up front. It's all of the, you know, storming, forming, norming, conforming, all of that. And you can see the look, the affect on their faces. They're like, oh, wow. all right, I want to be here. I need help, but is this the right yeah. thing for me? And then come Friday, oh. they're changed. And we say straight up, trust the process. Yeah. You know, credit, credit you for being here and for being brave enough you know, open up, share, and I, I can guarantee you, you're going to be changed. Again, I'm never going to oversell and say, yeah. oh, Miss Dominus, spread the pixie. Right. Oh, you're healed, you know, demons out and right. all that stuff. No, you know, it's a process and it's yeah. a journey, but I feel very strongly in that we right. provide our participants the tools they need to heal right. and the mind, body, and soul. You know, that's the one thing we say in the others. Yeah. We're about empowerment, empowering our participants to take ownership. Right. Of their own healing. And I know for your part, you know, what you bring to the table is powerful. Limiting beliefs, you know, yeah. and things of that nature, really unearthing, hey, what's holding you back? Right. And a lot of it you come to find, and I think you'll corroborate this, it's it's a loss of agency. Yeah. It's it's a loss of this sense that I have any semblance of control. Right. And I think for our part, we show them, hey, oh, you don't yeah. have control of everything. Right. You have control over more facets of your life than you think, and they're important facets. Right. Mike, also I wanna talk about who benefits from your program. Like <clears throat> if, if, who is it that can benefit? I know there's no cost to it. So who are you looking for? Like who would fit into this program for you as a participant? I'll say our ideal candidate, veteran, first responder, Police, fire, EMS, medical, whatever, with PTS, you know, and, and I'm not saying you need a clinical diagnosis per se, right. but if you're feeling that trauma, hey, come and see us. Yeah. I'll say, you know, hey, as long as you're not imminently suicidal, you know, then you need immediate intervention. We're not an intervention style right. program. Um, like, man, I want to hurt somebody. It's like, well, hey, don't hurt me. You know, right. or any of our other people. No, but if you're like, hey, I'm having trouble holding it together. I just, Somebody asked me this just the other day and, and I expressed it. The ideal candidate for us, I think, yeah. paired with what I would call our, our value proposition. It's five days. And again, I'm never going to oversell and say, hey, in five right. days, we're going to heal you. No. You know, anyone that preaches that is not not being, you know, not, not being authentic and not being truthful. Right. But, um you know, we say, hey, in five days, we really think we can kind of put you on the path to healing and arm you with some tools. So for us, our ideal candidate is somebody that they have a job, they're trying to hold it together, but they right. know, hey, I'm starting to come off the rails. It right. could be the same thing with their relationships, with their spouse, their children, whomever. Right. Um, right. And they're like, I I'm, I'm barely holding it together. And I know if I don't make some changes and I don't do something, yeah. it, it, it's going to fall apart. But I can't unplug for six weeks to go to some immersive program or some inpatient. Where do I go? Right. They come to us for five days. Exactly. And and again, I think it's it's transformative. Oh yeah. Again, we've got great outcomes statistically, but really more important to me, 
is when we have our, our participants, and certainly not all, but many will some will come back and say, Hey man, this saved my marriage, this right. saved my life. Yeah, we get a lot of those. I love that. And there's no charge, right? Now there's no charge to go through the program. That's right. It's absolutely free for the participant, for our veterans. Wow. We've even partnered with Veteran Airlift, Air, Veteran Airlift Command and Mercy Medical Angels right. um, for either free flight. It's all free to the participant. I with some, it. it's like reduced costs for us. So. Yes, that's awesome. And you're funded then by private supporters and by funding. And so if anybody is interested to fund this program, there's the little number going down below, <laughs> yes. Warriors Ascent. Um, I encourage you to reach out. The program is amazing. You can even come and observe, right, Mike? If if certain parts of it, you can come and observe and see what it's like. Mike, I'm so happy that you've been on the program. That is too cool. Um, we're going to move on to Abraham. Abraham. Yes, sir. How's it going? Wake up. I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to show your clip. Julie, go ahead and play it. Hey, what's up? My name is Ibrahima Abraham Sise. I am the creator and producer of The Freedom Project. And today I wanted to take a moment and share a little bit about The Freedom Project, where we are at, and also show a clip from our most recent episode, Sports and Mental Health. So let's get into this. The Freedom Project is a documentary series that takes viewers inside the journey of individuals as they cope with mental illness. And we do this by telling stories. We tell stories of uh, people that actually went through a specific mental illness and how they actually learn about it and what does mental illness means to them. And also we have a mix of psychologists offering their own opinions and their own professional advice. And we have family members or siblings of an individual who actually had mental illness or a form of mental illness and how exactly did they support them. The whole goal with this project is to explain mental illness in the simplest form possible. Because four years ago, I was not aware of mental illness. I didn't even know what anxiety really was until I went to therapy. And the way I consumed the information, I'm trying to share that same um, experience with everyone that I come across. So without giving away everything about this film, I wanna show you guys a clip from our sports and mental health episode. And uh, just know that what we're doing is so needed in our community right now. And I genuinely believe the only way that we can save the planet is to invest in people's mental health. So before I go, I have a very important question. Does mental illness prevent us from leaving or is it proof that we are, we are alive? So let me know in the comments and I appreciate you for taking time and watching this video. Peace. Well, I never talked about it when I was playing for the Chiefs. So it was just wasn't something you talked about, it wasn't something that was addressed. Uh, you know, the only time they would talk about mindset or, or anything psychological was if there was a, a problem. Performance anxiety can happen to anybody. And for us to carry on the stereotype or the stigma that it's wrong to get help when you have had these challenges, you're doing yourself such an in-service. Something bad had to happen for them to bring it up. Uh, but you wanted to avoid that at all costs, right? Not, you just One, you didn't want to show weakness, but two, you didn't want the team thinking that there was anything wrong with you, just like you would want to hide injuries, physical injuries. You want to hide anything psychologically that could be challenging to you from, from the teams. Abraham, that is so good. <laughs> It was so weird, like watching myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I am so excited to tell people about this project. It's a project that you have gotten into, but I want to tell you, tell everybody a little bit about my journey with you. You know, I met Abraham and he came in and told me he had this dream, and this story and all this kind of stuff. And I was fascinated and he said, I want to bring awareness up to professional athletes, to athletes, to people in general, that mental health isn't bad. And you know, it's been a mission of mine my whole life. I've been in this field and everybody's like, oh God, yeah, I don't want to talk to that guy. And oh man, you have to go see Jeff and all that kind of stuff. And it's like this mission that you're on, Abraham, and with COVID and the way things are changing, and Mike, you too, it's like in the military, it is not a, a very common thing to, hey, I got PTSD, I need some help. 
it's like that's kind of unheard of in the military. Mm -hmm. Same way with professional athletes. So, Abraham, I'm going to dig in a little bit and, and ask you, tell me about why the Freedom Project. Why did you put that together? Yeah, definitely. But uh, first of all, it, it, you know, Mike, you know, I've heard like a lot about you from Jeff. So, you know, it's an honor to like be on the call with you and hear what is what is uh, what do you, what is it that you actually do? Because Jeff, you know, he's really kind of like over the place whenever he like explain it. You, you know, he, he makes you sound like a superhero. So, <laughs> so it's nice to like actually like validate. I'm saying, oh, wow, he's actually a superhero. <laughs> So yeah, you got a real one <laughs> to, to like meet you like in person. But with the uh, uh, film that I'm doing right now, the documentary, I decided to work on it because um, back when I was in West Africa, you know, that's where I actually grew up. Uh, I used to play soccer, and I had a really good future to become a professional player. However, I um, um, yeah. So this story is a little bit heavy. So just a heads up for anyone listening. I um, experienced one of my friends actually passed away in front of me, and that actually broke me. You know, to to even today, whenever I'm talking about it, my body will, will like get a little bit hot. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so I actually experienced it right in front of me. So that put me in a very weird place mentally. And at the same time, while I was going through that, you know, we had a guy, kind of like an older man, who was uh, kind of like friends with all the kids. So he he was just trying to help us understand this trauma. However, uh, he, he turned out to be a molester and he actually molested me. So while I was going through that very tragic experience with my friend. So um, after those two tragic experiences, I was in a very weird place. I didn't really know why that happened. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to process that feeling and those emotions of like losing a friend and actually watching it happen. Um, so, I just decided to leave uh, um, to like stop playing soccer because my whole team were kind of like, what are you doing? You know, you're a really good player. Why aren't you like doing well? But I didn't even understand what was wrong with me. And I felt this pressure from the whole team. And, you know, my family didn't really know what was wrong with me. And somehow I like developed a stutter. So up until five years ago, I had a really bad stutter to a point that I was kind of a little bit mute. So yeah. sometimes, you know, whenever I'm talking, you hear a little bit stutter. But right now, I'm just excited that I can talk properly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, so um, I, I, I left playing soccer, but the whole time I've always wished that I, I wish I know what was wrong with me just so that I can continue playing. But um, as I got older, that dream just kind of disappeared. And some somewhere um, along the line, I decided I'm just going to leave the country and somehow my problems are going to disappear. So that's how I ended up in America. But those problems just got worse. And right. you know, but I ended up meeting uh, someone who like introduced me to a psychologist, and uh, that's where I actually uh, 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 kind of had a clear definition of what was wrong with me, as far as you know, extreme like anxiety and the fact that my heart would beat whenever I would uh, I would talk to even anyone uh, like right. five years ago. So yeah, so those. Um, through that experience of like understanding, you know, what was wrong with me, somehow my entire personality changed. Like, you know, I was a huge introverted person and I was always behind the computers, just hiding in my room. Um, but so, yeah, it's, it's like I, I uh, decided that I want to know why, you know, mental illness is not a topic that we're not talking about, you know, on right. TV. You know, pretty much everyone is talking about it because it's as simple as actually going and get uh to like get help but but the thing is there's a lack in like awareness people don't really know what it is right. and the, that there's a huge stigma around it because even till today especially in africa uh my family will like hear me talking about you know mental health they don't really understand it at this point but they are trying to support but i'm just like you know what this saved my life this literally saved me because i was in a really dark place and um i decided to do a film about it and just you know, talk about it as much as possible. And um, at this point, you know, the talking is going well. Well, I can talk really well. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, also connecting with so many people that um, also want to do something like this, uh, like raising awareness, but they don't really know how to. Right. So through like connecting, we're just building something really big. And I don't even know where this is going. It's like literally every day something new will pop up you know and it's just happening and I'm, I'm i'm just very honored that 
number one I can talk, number one I got to meet Dave, uh, uh, <laughs> Jeff, who is that also helping me through this journey of like, you know, learning about, you know, the whole mental health space and introducing me with so many different people in the space as well. Yeah. Well, tell me, tell me a little bit about the, the goal of the Freedom Project. You, right now, it's to bring mental health awareness to to the this episode is the sports episode correct yes and you have other episodes that you want to bring this area to what are those yeah so um as far as the episodes you know the reason why i started uh with sports is because that's my background yeah uh, but at the same time you know just doing uh, kind of like going through this phase mental health and like learning about it uh, again like talking to people and you know, learning that pain is something that we all have in common, but we don't talk about it. And, right. and it's like we're building all these walls that, that are stopping us from actually living. So, it, you know, because that's who I was back then. I had all these walls around me. And, you know, my stutter just got so bad that I would literally put, like, do this just to talk. It yeah. was really bad. And, you know, that can be, you know, kill your confidence to a point uh. of, you know, I didn't want to talk to girls at that point because it was like, who, who, yeah. who wants to talk to someone who like hits the table? So, you know, I limit myself based off of that stutter. But at yeah. the same time, I met so many people that also had like, you know, depression or they went through domestic violence or you know, right. child abuse. And these were stories that I was getting, especially through like social media. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I like started talking about mental health literally every day and people were sending me their own personal uh, um, like stories and I'm gonna say okay I need to do a documentary that, that like touches on every uh, every aspect of mental illness but using yeah. social problems um, as an example you know to like talk about for example sports and why you know we we do have so many issues within sports because the problem is that mental um, illness is just behind the scenes and just drinking coffee or tea and we're just talking around it. And the same issue happens with domestic violence and like even racism, people are just talking about race. But the thing is, there's so much trauma that's underneath racism that we're not talking about. Right. You know, we're just going through a very vicious cycle and not actually talking about the problem. So my goal is to address pretty much every aspect of mental illness. Yeah. And I'm like stuck with 16 episodes, but in a good way. <laughs> so well, like, I want to produce all of that. <laughs> hey, Ram, just bringing the awareness. Like, let's let's even take it to Mike's world. It's yeah. like enlightening the military about mental health issues. Mm -hmm. It's like how that's been a battle that you've been fighting, Mike, for a long time of being in this field in the healing field and trying to get the military who's in the job of getting rid of feelings and not allowing those because that's survival. That's what they had to do. I mean, you can't be out there. Oh man, I feel so bad that I did that. No, you got to do it. Yeah. So it's like now you're in the field of, of emotions and feelings and these people are healing and you're fighting that battle with the military. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, we like to say the military does a, a really good job of training you to do your job, but not oh. the, afterwards yeah <laughs> right the repercussions the ramifications of of having done job and you know hey not that that's a bad thing i mean the you know the military does what it does but i think they're coming around they've yeah. got resilience programs and a variety of things so i'll speak for the army in specific but yeah. dod in general the proverbial learning organization you know they're always trying to get better so you know to their credit they realize that we need to invest in that human dimension aspect you know preservation of the force and family right. is the exactly. program of record and they're moving you know they're they're moving out and and doing that but yeah yeah no there is still that stigma but it's getting better it is it's getting better and i feel that too yeah i feel like it's getting much better yeah uh, uh, um the whole process it's like very slow even me trying to produce this film you know it has been a drag because uh, I've, I've, I've had a lot of people tell me oh my god this is a great idea you know but but then 
when whenever it comes to do you want to do a quick episode people are like ah you know i'm not ready yet which is which is you know okay because you definitely have to be ready because it took me like 14 years to be ready to like talk about my my own issues so yeah um, th you know this is th that is also something that i truly understand uh, which is giving people that space to get ready but we can do better by actually giving them the you know all the tools that they need to get ready for example to my documentary the way that everything is structured it's, it's like having for example you like a psychologist basically explaining what john is talking about which is a clear case of you know anxiety but um someone who's watching doesn't really know um what anxiety really is but hearing john explaining it and then they're like whoa that's exactly what i experienced and then they hear a psychologist say so this is what anxiety looks like and this is how we actually walk you through it so that's my goal with the whole documentary to walk people through that journey that that took me 14 years to get there but yeah within one episode and and you know they can be like okay this is a b c and this is uh, what i need to do to like get to z which is the awareness portion of it because through awareness you know we can only get to healing so exactly you know if people don't know they can really uh take the steps to get help and i'm gonna i'm gonna use you as an example right now abraham so you talking about this mm -hmm. on a podcast in front of lots of people and what do you think that does for you? I mean, uh, so I didn't even realize that, you know, other people were watching this. I thought it was a Zoom call. And then it says like 20 plus people. I actually started freaking out. And I was like, oh God, I thought this was a Zoom call. But why, why does he say that people are watching? And and then I literally did like a breathing exercise. <laughs> like, you know, my yoga mat is right here. I'm going to say, okay, calm down. You know, right. just, just breathe, and I like did like a whole like like yoga session, which yeah. I had like six weeks or something. But you know, thanks for the challenge. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you know what, Aram? What what? Every time you do that, every time you tell your story, mm -hmm. you're healing. I know. Yeah, you're definitely. walking into that fear, walking into the 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 darkness, and and you're dealing with it. And that's what processing these experiences is, is you're not running from them. You're, mm -hmm. hey, I'm bringing them to the table. I'm I'm dealing with them here in front of all these people. Mm -hmm. I'm being vulnerable. I'm putting it out there. And mm -hmm. I so much appreciate you doing that, Abraham. It really means a lot to me. But like you said, it's just being real and letting people know that this happens and it's okay yeah. go get help you know go get help yeah but like you know in, in a very nice way because i'm like hey go get help <laughs> right right it's gotta be hey, a, this is this is how it looks like and this this is something that we all experience you right. know very like extreme levels sometimes but there is help available so yeah exactly definitely well and that leads me right into the goat tip of the week <laughs> Here it comes. Julie's getting ready to prepare. Goat tip of the week. It's okay to not be okay. <laughs> you know, if you're if you're struggling, that is okay. I don't know anybody in life that hasn't struggled at some point because of our experiences. And we might not even think that it's trauma or it's that big. But if you're not okay with it, if you're not feeling good about it, reach out get help. It doesn't mean you're broken. It just means you're a goat and you want to get better because that's what goats do. They don't, oh, I'm, I'm broken and I'm just going to sit with this. No, I want to fix it and I want to move forward. And I know that somebody can help me with this. Go tip of the week. Thank you. Awesome. Um, something I want to, you've got something going on at UMKC, Abraham. Is that true? Yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, me, you and John and Jamisha. Well, thanks for that. Uh, for the uh, flyer pool up there. So I have an intern that's been working for me for uh, for almost uh, six months now. My timing is very wrong, <laughs> but <laughs> but you know you know uh, something like that. So UMKC, you know, uh, she goes there and she's a psychology major, and she um, is like the hardest worker I've ever met. It's like you, you know she is like. I'm actually like learning from him because she's like such a smart kid, especially with social media. So uh, yeah, she made all the connection and she's like, hey, uh, we're doing this program with the Block Scholarship, uh, you know, 
uh, psychology student. I, I believe this is a psychology student, but it's probably all, all of them, uh, 70 plus kids. So uh, we're going to go and talk about mental health and answer some of their mental health questions. And I decided, okay, I'm not a psychologist. I'm going to bring Jeff and John and Jamisha <laughs> just so that I can just be like, oh, yeah, right, yeah. John, what, what do you think about that? Oh, <laughs> that yeah. To all those kids, because you know, I may not have the right answers. I'm just uh, a guy who likes to uh, talk about his very, you know, traumatic past. So, but you know, having you and uh, John be there yeah. and Misha, you know, you guys are the pros, and you know, we can answer those questions because, especially with, with COVID and schools closing, you yeah. know, a lot of kids are struggling mentally and. You know, some of them, you know, they don't know how to communicate those things with their parents because, they, you know, their parents don't have that space with them. So right. this is a, a very unique uh, opportunity for us to just go and, and like, listen to their genius because this kid's a genius because the one that I'm working with, she, oh. you know, she's absolutely amazing. And yeah, I'm, I'm like super excited to just go and, and like learn from them and learn from you and John and Jamisha. So <laughs> it's going to be fun. I'm very excited for it. I'm happy to be there. I'm so excited. And Mike, you got anything coming up in the near future, a cohort? We do. So we have a cohort in April, April and May, you know, and then uh, September, October, November, a gala at the end of the year, you know, Veterans Day weekend. So, you know, that's our fundraising thing. But more importantly, you know, our cohorts that are helping people. So, yeah, those are the big things on the horizon for us. So I just want to uh, say thank you guys so much. And I do want everybody out there to know that both of these two folks here are uh, looking for sponsorship. They're looking for sponsorship. And so if you're interested in the Warriors Ascent Project, I encourage you to check out um, warriorsascent.org. And if you're looking for the Freedom Project and you would like to become involved with that in some way, please reach out to Abraham and his contact information is right down below. Thank you all so much for being here and thanks everybody for chipping in and Greg and all you folks that chimed in. Thank you. And I will see you next week. Talk to you later. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.